Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending July 15th, 2017. And yes, I'm out in my garage. Why? Because I can. And it's summer. So anyway, this first one was sent to me by Joseph L. And it's basically a video, but I'll explain it. It's a really cool video. And check out the channel, too. It's called SciShow. Um, I always like to uh, look up these kind of channels and stuff like that that do uh, science uh, type of deals. And this channel has a lot of science material. Sci Show is the name, S-C-I-S-H-O-W. Anyway, the um, video is about a research vessel to where they made the mistake. This is a British research vessel, and they made the mistake of allowing the Internet to choose the name. And the Internet came up with the name Bodie McBoatface. You probably read that article. It's been posted, especially on Facebook and other Internet social sites. Uh, that's what they chose, Bodie McBoatface. But they decided not to use that name, and they named the research uh, vessel after David Attenborough instead, but the name Bodie McBoatface did not go to waste. Uh, Submersible, um, uh, run by that same uh, research facility, British research facility, is now bearing the name of Bodie McBoatface, and it's just been accompanied to do a mission with the RRS James Clark Ross. So I won't give away a lot more details. It's not a long video. It's about four minutes, 23 seconds, and it talks about Bodie McBoatface and uh, the Submersible that got the name. And it also talks about um, how about the, the diversity of frogs we um, see today. So if you get a chance, check out that video. And next up, this is from Newsweek. It's from their sci tech and science um, section. NASA space probes have discovered an artificial barrier around Earth created through human activity, showing we are not only responsible for shaping the environment on land, but we are also having an impact on space, too. Evidently, low-frequency waves, uh, especially used for communication with submarines and all kinds of things like that, are actually creating a uh, nice uh, protective barrier around. Uh, the barrier which comes and goes is the result of very low-frequency radio communications re interacting with particles in space, which results in sort of a shield protecting Earth from high-energy radiation in space. In fact, what happens, too, is the Van Allen uh, Belt, too, which is uh, a protective layer. What we is these very, very low frequency waves actually take the Van Allen, um, uh, the Van Allen belt, and actually expand it out farther around us to create a bigger shield. So NASA scientists detected the barrier with the Van, Van Allen probes, which were designed to study electrons and ions in our new space environment. Normally, very low frequency signals from radio telescopes are transmitted from the ground and are used to communicate with submarines deep below the surface of the ocean. However, they also end up going into the atmosphere. The result is a massive VLF bubble enshrouding Earth, NASA said. The bubble can be seen from high above Earth's surface in the space environment surrounding it. So this could end up giving us, I mean, it may not protect us from the biggest thing the sun could possibly spew out as far as, you know, coronal mass injections, but it definitely helps, and every little bit does help. And this final one is from my friend David N., DARPA is funding brain-computer interfaces to treat blindness, paralysis, and speech uh, disorder. And Elon Musk is involved in this, too. You know, the guy that's involved in all kinds of things. These days, it seems that you're nobody if you're not working on a way to merge machines with human brain. Early this year, Facebook and profess professional moves, perpetual moonshot enthusiast Elon Musk announced plans for brain-computer interfaces that could allow us to read the thoughts of others and improve our capacity for learning. Uh, the Neural Engineering System Design Program gives us a peek into what sort of achievements might actually be possible using neuro, neural interfaces. I think it really the, the things that are going to really drive this are people being cured of blindness, uh, spinal cord injuries and paralysis, um, stuff like that too. Um, it will be a long time before medical science allows us to grow new eyes or repair a broken spinal cord, but by linking brains to computers, it will be possible to leverage digital devices to restore the functionality of damaged body parts. Initially, we were focused on what we call connectivity disorders, meaning illnesses and injuries that destroy or severely impair a person's sensory or motor connections to the outside world. Looking forward, I imagine the neural prosthetics could be used to treat certain neurological diseases. So as usual, all the links, thank you uh, for sending in the links, uh, David, and uh, also uh, what was it, Joseph L. and David, thank you for sending in the links. and. Uh, it's always appreciated, those people that contribute to the TDD report. All the links will be in the description below if you want to check these things out, and I would encourage you to check them out. And uh, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.